guys, um, I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these, which is a Pringles can diffuser uh, used for macro photography. Uh, first of all, I want to give a big shout out and a big thanks to uh, Photography on the Net. Uh, it's an amazing forum. found some awesome people over there uh, that helped me out quite a lot. Uh, kind of new to macro photography myself. So um, all this help from them has allowed me to get, at least in my opinion, some pretty decent pictures with very basic equipment and getting up to speed really quickly. So I um, managed to do one of these myself. Uh, the results with it are quite awesome. It's very simple to build. Uh, I've seen instructions all over the web, but I haven't actually found a tutorial or a video tutorial or anything with pictures that shows you how to make one of these. So um, using Canopic Jars instructions, and I believe this originally comes from a guy called Moose, um, I'll show you how to make one of these. So let's get to it. Things you're gonna need. Foam balls. These are the ones I use, doesn't really matter, as long as they're size, it's more or less about that, let's compare it to hand, more or less. These are 12 ounce, 354 milliliter bowls, I had to get these imported from the US because I was unable to find these here in Spain. So, that's what I'm using. So, we're gonna need that ball. Gonna need something sharp, whatever you prefer. I use both. Some tape, some duct tape. Some sort of diffuser material. Uh, and as for that, it's a matter of preference. Uh, I would recommend try different things, see what you like the most, and stick with that. Uh, to give you some examples, packing foam. This is this one specifically, at least, is from a monitor. When a monitor comes in a box, it comes wrapped in this kind of plasticky, see half see through thing. So I've used that kitchen paper, take your pick. And of course, a pair of scissors, and can't forget the most important part, a Pringles can. So for the sake of this video, since I'm recording with my Rebel T3i, I can't which is the one I use for macro. I can't um, show you directly on that one. I'm going to be using my old Pentax K10D. Uh, this is not a macro lens, this is an old crappy Sigma 7300. Although it does say DL macro, uh, it's not really a macro lens. And a very, very old flash. Uh, this is roughly the length now of a Canon 100mm, uh, just for reference, but since you'll be doing this on your own lens or a combination of lens with extension tubes, um, it might change, so you're going to be using for reference whichever lens you have on your camera. So let's get started. I've already pre-cleaned the inside of the Pringles can uh, with some kitchen paper and a wooden spoon actually because my hands too big to fit in there. Um, once that is clean, <coughs> sorry, uh, what you're going to want to do is squish it and attach it onto your flash. So basically you're going to have that. Now what you want to do, you can set that aside for a minute. And we're going to go to the bowl. So, 
As with these bowls that I have, they fit perfectly. The size of the bottom part of the bowl is pretty much the exact size of the Pringles can, so that works perfect for me. If the bowl you're going to be using is bigger or smaller, you're going to, going to have to cut it a little bit differently. But for what I'm using here, that is the exact size. So we're just going to go ahead and cut this bottom part out. about do it. So now we have the bowl without the bottom. Next thing is we take the camera, we insert the bowl into the Pringles can, which is where you'll figure out the exact size of the hole needed. Uh, it doesn't need to fit too tight because you're gonna have to tilt it. If the hole's too tight, the bowl will just remain straight. So what you want to do next is all right, that should work. Tilted should be almost flat on the top part here. And set it. Let's see if I can show you guys. about there. So distance wise, just about the end of your lens. And I would move it a little bit out from there, just a tiny bit. Once we have that, what you want to do, grab a pen, Sharpie, anything, and mark your Pringles can. It's easier for you while you're holding it. Pull it out to make sure it stays in the same place. And mark it all the way around the Pringles can so that we end up with that. See the line there? Once we have that simple, pretty straightforward. Pringles cans. Pringles cans are not that hard to cut through. Make sure you kind of stick to the line. I just missed a little bit there. Get it. You should be having that. Bottom part of the can. For this camera that I'm actually using right now, it's funny, just realized that. For this combination, um, I'm using more than half of the can, because this is the bit I'm going to be using. But on my Canon one, with my uh, Young Noir Flash and 100mm L, I'm using just about half. So if I wanted to, I could use the other half to make another one, but I would have to cut the bottom out, so I don't bother with that. So once we have this, you'll see that just looking at it like that, it should fit just about, and should look just about right, because the bowl is going to go in front, which is exactly our next step. Uh, there's probably a million different ways of doing this. What I do, because it works for me, is put the bowl in couple of strips of tape, put it as tightly as you can, I don't know if I can show you this guys. So not a lot of can is sticking out into the bowl, and then I tape a piece of tape on the top, just about there. 
fit the bottom back in. And put another piece of tape down there. Pretty much just to hold it in place. Nice and simple. I'm gonna make sure that the can is actually inside the bowl. Just kind of squeeze the corners in. If you see that some bits of the um, bowl don't fit right, just use a hobby knife or anything. Cut a little bit extra out of the bowl. And you should be good to go. That works. Perfect. So what I do next is, um, duct tape. You don't have to, but there's two benefits for that. One, it holds it in place properly, including the bowl, makes it a little bit tougher on the outside and it looks nicer. Basically, bits of tape. Sorry, video stopped for some reason. Uh, bits of tape. This is how to just slowly cover the entire thing. This bit over here can be a bit complicated because of the angle, but don't know if you guys can see that. Got some bub air bubbles in there. Really, not a big deal as long as it works. So I'm going to cover this up and then I'll get back to you. All right, so did kind of a poor job here, just for the sake of making it quickly. So once we have that, this is pretty much done. Uh, the only thing left would be the actual diffuser material that goes in front of the bolt. Now, like I said earlier, this is a matter of preference. Uh, the more you practice, the more you try different things, you'll eventually find uh, something that gives you exactly the light that you're looking for. So, I've already pre-cut some things here. Two of the ones I mentioned earlier. This is the pack packing foam, the one from the monitor. Uh, it's got like a double layer kind of thing. So that's one example. Kitchen paper, same. Oh, and as for cutting this, I just used a bowl, put it on top, mark it, and cut it out. Very simple. Uh, for this one, I'm actually gonna use the kitchen paper. Uh, it's one of the few that I haven't, few ones I haven't tried out myself yet. Uh, since I used the bowl as a template, it's gonna fit perfectly on top of it. Now, as to attach, attaching it, there's two ways that work for me. You gotta use some tape, in which case you might not want to cut it in the exact same size as the bowl, unless you wanna put a lot of tape on around the bowl. Um, and, a stapler. Quite simple. Just staple it onto the bowl, which is what I use in this one. Don't know if you guys can see it. It's loads of staples around the corner. Now, one more trick. Well, trick. Something that I found recently is this stuff. This is used for spiral binding. Uh, any paper shop should have it. It's kind of a matte half see-through plasticky sheet quite resistant and just this by itself because I've tried this just holding the flash over here shooting through this giving light on something gives really nice light uh, I haven't tried just this sheet on a can maybe a couple of layers so it's a bit too see-through 
Uh, but what I've actually done is on this one, which is the one I use for most of my shots, this has two layers of this plastic foam from the monitors and one of this plastic on top. I did this mainly because it gives you this. So it doesn't break. Uh, obviously when you're using just kitchen paper or just this foam, this foam's quite resistant, but uh, if you happen to be outdoors shooting macro uh, in the mountains, the woods, which is where I normally go, um, I think it would be just enough if I shove the camera into a bush trying to capture some insect and then poke it with a branch or just anything pretty much. If it's just catching paper, it'll break very easily. And if you don't have any extra ones out in the field, then, well, you're kind of screwed. So I put this plastic on top uh, for extra protection. And since it also has um, this kind of matte uh, texture, uh, it gives a little bit extra diffusion, and this it, this works pretty well for me. Uh, I also have one of those cut out. Uh, I'll be doing one of those with the kitchen paper. I guess before, so got, let's say two. Again, this how much you use is a matter of trying. So put those two together with the plastic, or well, the spiral binding plastic. Okay, put that on top of our new bowl and since I'm just going to use it like that I am going to staple it. What I normally do is the one on the top kind of pull the paper out a little bit so it's nice and tight in there stretched. One in the bottom same thing for the sides. There you go. You've made yourself a Pringles can diffuser. Let's put it on the camera here. Reference. So there you go. Sleek looking. This flash is broken, so I can't actually show you the light. But um, it was mainly for reference. Um, actually, the 100L is bigger in the front so it's closer to the diffuser but uh, same difference works just great uh, I'll put up a couple of example shots uh, I have posted them on POTN but I'll put a couple up after the video that I've done with this one over here and my Rebel T3i and Canon 100mm L and I think that was it. If I'm forgetting anything, feel free to comment. Look me up on POTN. Uh, my nickname over there is Hamster-X. Um, or just comment here on this video. Uh, thanks a million, guys. Hope it helped.